look at our situations as hell come. You know, cry about it all the time. And wonder why it won't change. We're the one that needs to be changed, not God. Amen. Not our situation. It's our life. We need to look in the mirror and say, you're full of sin. You, Amy Samuel, you're full of sin. I'm full of sin. I've done wrong. I've sinned. There's things in me that don't need to be there. And repent at the altars. Help God change me. Help change me. And I'm telling you, this place, we can come in here where the fire of God is actually burning and moving among us. Come on. You know how many times I've come on a Wednesday night and we just had to go home? Here. A few times. You know why? Different reasons. All right? Sometimes, I'm as a pastor, I say, is this sin? Is this a lack of desire? Is this a lack of hunger? I've been to, see, I've been to church in many different circumstances and cases. And if I couldn't be there, I wanted to be there. Right? We looked for an excuse not to come. It's a heart problem. It's a sin problem. I'm not saying we're getting drunk or something like that, but just little things that come in that try to destroy us. I didn't mean to get y'all sorry. But little things come in. And we lose desire. We lose zeal. We become content not being in his presence. And that's sad. And Jesus loves us. And he wants to pull us back to him. He wants to pull us back to him. From old times. I, I she talks about her grandpa a lot. She said there was two things going on in the house when they would go there. He was, said, Papa was either sitting at the kitchen table reading the Bible or he's in the back room praying. It's pretty simple lines. Those were the two things. In the church world today, it'd be a miracle if you could walk into the Christian's house and actually see them reading the Bible or praying. That'd be a miracle greater than salvation, just a pound. I mean, that's where we are. Ain't that sad? But that's where we are. And I just want to bring these things out. Not, not to be mean. I love you. But wouldn't it be great if the word that come, they say, man, I know they're down there praying. I'm hurting. I'm broken. I'm empty. They come knocking on their door and say, come on in. I just had a word of prayer. I've been praying. And, I, and God spoke to me. And, and it showed me that you were coming. Right? You ever seen that? I know I called Sister Terry a time or two. I called her and I said, Sister Terry, she said, Andy, honey, it's a funny thing you called me. Thursday night, I come walking out of the jail and God laid you on my heart and I seen you weeping before God. I didn't tell her what had happened. She took the conversation because she done had it with God. Another issue come up this year and I thought, I told the guy at work, I said, I'm going to hear from Sister Terry. And sure enough, word got sent to me, I'm praying for you. And there's a walk with God in that woman that we all should have, right? We all should have, but the church has grown dead and cold. Sin has come in, and we have no desire for the things of God, and God can't use us in that capacity. And I'll put me on the line first, all right? And I'm guilty. There's times I don't pray like I could, right? All of us. Times we come short and we fail and we allow things in. But it don't have to be that way. If you would, let's stand. And I hope I didn't come across as mean or unloving. Oh, God. I love you. I care about you. But I get tired. I'll be honest with you. I get tired of seeing you walking in defeat. I get tired. And I'm not blaming it on the devil. Sometimes we just got to look in the mirror and say, you know what? It ain't the devil. It's me. It's my choices, my actions, or my lack of prayer, my lack of grief, my lack of whatever. Man, we want to blame everything on the devil. I want to look in the mirror and say, Andy, you're the man. You're the man. Satan's fighting me and I made that choice. Problems are coming my way. I made that choice. I've done it. I'm guilty. God forgive me. You know what that would do to the church? That turned the church around. Then the world would begin to right now. Instead of the world looking for toilet paper and looking for those things and money and, and looking to the government, yeah, they'd be saying, oh man, we've got to get to the house of God. There's a fire that's burning down there. They may not have no toilet paper, but man, they've got a fire in that place, a burning, and I don't know when I just get there, I feel better about myself. 
I feel like there's hope again. But the church has lost her hope. Here, let's pray. Oh, God. Oh, God. Help us today, Father. Lord, forgive me, God, of my shortcomings, my sins. My failures, oh God. God. Lord, forgive me. My God. heart is full I need to be for you, Lord, I need you, God. Oh, my sins. I need how you believe how much I've lived. God, I pray that you'll forgive me and help me today, God. Lord, I pray that you will set our hearts on fire. The rain is for me tomorrow. Oh, you're our refuge, God. As the God, I'm asking you to change. My broken Lord, dreams scattered on me, the oh God. ground. Lord, start with me, come. And please let my heart be on fire again. Now let my heart be on fire. I need your grace Lord, to make it through. Lord, all I have is you. I'm dead at your mercy.
back sometime. All right. Would y'all love to have him back sometime? John Joy, I did. One of the greatest compliments. You can tell them how pretty they sung if you want to, but if you want to make them feel good, say, man, that was anointing. That was anointed. You got people who love God, you tell them it's anointed, they, they walk out of there feeling good. That's like one of the greatest compliments. And they appreciate everything. And God's good. I want to say, Andy, before we dismiss, um, I was thinking, I think if I would have been with you,